My name is James Westland. I'm a geologist and I live in the Isle of Mull. I'm sitting here on the old pier at Carsig. Uh, Carsig is in uh, the south of the island. It's a spectacular location and its uh, geology is truly remarkable. Uh, behind me you'll see cliffs. Those cliffs are composed of basaltic lavas that were poured out over 60 million years ago. Those lavas overlie sedimentary rocks of Cretaceous age which was the era of the dinosaurs. So what we can see, quite a variety of rocks here at Carsig. That's what we'll be looking at today. What we have here on my left is what's called a sill. This long sinuous band of rock that you can see here. And what this is, this is an igneous rock that's been injected as molten material into a crack in the ground and it stands, because it's harder, it stands up as this band of rock that you can see here. It's completely different from the rock into which it's been intruded. And the rock it's been intruded into is this shale, this uh, shale uh, which is much older. Um, the shale is interesting itself. It's full of the casts of ammonites. Now, ammonites were sea creatures that lived a long, long time ago, They've long been extinct. And we can see ammonite casts on the shore here. It's a very good place to see them. Ammonites were sea creatures that lived a long time ago, long extinct. There aren't really any modern day equivalents. Um, it was a curly spiral shell thing with a very intricate design to the shell. The shells were remarkable looking things. And what, some of them were quite big. I mean, this one here is, I don't know, uh, uh, what, 10 centimetres across perhaps. There's some bigger than that around. There's another one further over, but it's filled with water at the moment. Um, like I said, it's just the cast of the ammonite, it's not the actual ammonite itself, that's long disappeared. Probably in a museum somewhere or somebody's private collection. But uh, they're quite remarkable creatures and yet they're associated with this, this age of rock. They're found in these uh, Cretaceous rocks. So these things would have been swimming in the sea when the dinosaurs were roaming about on land. Now we had a look at the shales earlier on, we saw ammonite fossils, we found a thing called a sill cutting across. Here we've got another igneous intrusion cutting across it, but instead of cutting across at a shallow angle, which is what a sill is, this one cuts across vertically, and it's what's called a dike. And this is a really good example of one, this is one of the best dikes in Mull. So let's go and have a look at it. This dike's actually in two, two parts. It's V-shaped, there's an offshoot here in the main part of the dike over here. So this offshoot of the dike, as you can see, it stands up slightly proud. It's a very, very distinct feature, cutting across the shales. And one of the things you'll you find with these igneous intrusions is that they heat up the rock either side. And what happens is, because the rock is slightly harder either side, it resists erosion. So you've got this bit coming up at the side here where it's slightly harder. We've got the main part of the dike, which is much wider, be about a metre, maybe a metre and a half wide. And as you can see, it takes a bit of a, a bit of a sinuous little detour here. Dikes aren't always perfectly straight features. They can wind and weave their way across the rock. And uh, this one's fairly typical of the dikes you find in Mull. There's lots of these dikes in Mull. And uh, this is a really good example of one. It's just about vertical. Sometimes they can be slightly sub-vertical, maybe inclined a little bit, um, but this one is pretty much vertical. And if we move on a little bit further, we can see an interesting feature in it. What you can see here in the, the rock, it looks like it's crisscrossed in squares. And uh, these things are called joints. These are cooling cracks. So as the rock has solidified, you get these cracks appearing in it. Now you get a similar feature in the, the basalt lavas of Staffa where it appears as big, tall, vertical columns. And this is a very similar thing. You get these cracks, these blocks, if you like, appearing where it has chilled, where it's cooled down against the rock it's been intruded into. And that's what you've got here. Well, the, the south coast of Mull, where you get these great cliffs of basalt, like you have here, there's lots of caves, there's lots of waterfalls. And here we have a cave behind a waterfall. So I'm just gonna 
nip in behind it right now. As you can see, you can actually stand behind this waterfall in the cave. We're sitting on the rocky platform uh, directly behind me. There's a little sea stack called Andunan, and Andunan means the little fort. So whether it was used as a fort at any time in the past, who knows? Directly behind it, you'll see the headland sticking out and again, great tall cliffs. That headland is the southwest end of the Lagan Peninsula, a very, very remote, seldom visited part of Mull. And in between the two, you can probably just see it, is the entrance to Loch Bui. I'm sitting in a little cave inside the sea stack called Andunan. An excellent spot to have lunch on a wet day. And as you can see, there's a little window at the top so you can look out as well. Really unusual little place. We're up on the, the cliffs here above Karsig Bay and uh, we're still in amongst the Cretaceous sandstone rocks at this point. We're quite high up the cliff but you can still find these Cretaceous rocks at this level. Now the rock behind me as you can see is a white creamy sandstone. It's quite crumbly and you'll see there's big sort of round ball like things in it. These are called concretions and they're quite common in this type of rock. You'll notice as well that the, it's weathered into like a honeycomb pattern. And again, that's very, very common with these type of rocks. A little bit higher up the slope from here, you've got the volcanics, you've got the lava pile. And uh, where the Cretaceous rocks end and the tertiary rocks begin is sometimes referred to as the KT boundary. That junction between these older rocks and these newer rocks uh, is famous for being the line demarking an extinction event. That was the point at which the dinosaurs died out. So there may have been dinosaurs where we are at this level just now, at this and up on the cliff, much higher up where the basalt lavas were, there were certainly no dinosaurs. So the boundary, that a extinction event boundary is just above us here on the slope. 